This is Daylight Magazine coming to you from Adventist World Radio Ghana, the voice of hope. Ghana, voice of hope. Today's Daylight Magazine has segments designed with you in mind. Stay tuned and be blessed. The steadfast love of the Lord never ceases. His mercies never will come to an end. And they are new every morning, new every morning. Great is thy faith. Steadfast love of the Lord never ceases. His mercies never will come to an end. They are new every morning. Every morning. New every morning. Oh, pray. Where is thy faithfulness? For our reflections, we shall look at Exodus chapter 10, verses 15 to 22. They covered all the ground until it was black. They devoured all that was left after the hail, everything growing in the fields and the fruit on the trees. Nothing green remained on tree or plant in all the land of Egypt. Moses. Pharaoh quickly Aaron. summoned Moses and Aaron and said, I have sinned against the Lord your God and against you. Now forgive my sin once more and pray to the Lord your God to take this deadly plague away from me. Moses then left Pharaoh and prayed to the Lord, and the Lord changed the wind to a very strong west wind, which caught up the locust and carried them into the Red Sea. Not a locust was left anywhere in Egypt. But the Lord hardened Pharaoh's heart, and he would not let the Israelites go. Then the Lord said to Moses, Stretch out your hand toward the sky, so that darkness spreads over Egypt. Darkness that can be felt. So Moses stretched out his hand toward the sky, and total darkness covered all Egypt for three days. You just listened to the audio version of Exodus chapter 10 verses 15 to 22.
What do you choose? Eternal damnation in hellfire or eternal life in a golden city? Hell was not made for any man but the devil. Dear listener, don't allow him to deceive you to sin to join him in hell. Accept Jesus Christ today as your personal savior. Get baptized into a true Bible-believing church and live daily for the Lord with the help of the Holy Spirit. Your eternal life will be guaranteed. God bless you. Welcome to a Healthy You program. This is the series number four of addiction topic that we are discussing. We are looking at alcohol addiction. We will continue with stage three of alcohol addiction. Stage three is the final stage of alcohol dependence. In addition to suffering from many of the problems experienced by individuals in stage 2, an individual in stage 3 can no longer control his or her behavior. There is tissue dependency, and withdrawal symptoms or tremor occur if you do not get the alcohol. It is now the tissue craving for the alcohol. This impaired control in which the compulsion to drink is overwhelming is the key identifier that is used to diagnose you who have progressed to alcohol dependency. A person may resort to drinking to relieve the physical discomfort of withdrawal symptoms. Most often, attempts to avoid the discomfort result in morning drinking to offset symptoms that develop after a short period of drinking the night before. Let us look at the effect of alcohol in the body. Solomon, a keen observer, articulates a description of alcoholism that remains relevant today. Solomon says in Proverbs chapter 23, verse 29 to 35, this is what Solomon said. He said, who has wool? In other words, Solomon is saying that who has alcohol-induced problems? Who has sorrow? He is saying sorrow that results from guilt and shame. Who has strife? That is, argument, divorce, legal problems. Who has complaints? That is, blaming others. Who has needless bruises? Bruises from fight, from falls, from liver diseases. Who has blood short eyes? That is the hangovers. Those who linger over wine, who go to sample bowels of mixed wine. In the end, it bites like a snake and poisons like a viper. That is the alcohol poisoning. Your eyes will see strange sights. That is the visual hallucinations from withdrawal. And your mind imagine confused things. That is the disorientations. You will be like one sleeping on the high seas, lying on top of rigging. That is the nausea, the vomiting, the unsteady gait, the tremors. 
They hit me, you will say, but I am not hurt. That is the muzzle soreness. They beat me, but I don't feel it. That is the blackout or the loss of memory. When will I wake up so I can find another drink? That is the solution to the alcoholic's problems, is to continue drinking rather than to stop. This is beautiful, you know, what Solomon put in Proverbs chapter 23. When talking about effect of alcohol, alcohol affects a person's mental, social, physical, economic, health, and spiritual health as well. The saying that alcohol brings out the worst in you somehow is true. Alcohol impairs mental function. If blood alcohol concentration is low, the effect of alcohol on the brain is also minimal. As the blood alcohol concentration increases, the degree of mental inefficiency increases as well. Alcohol decreases voluntary muscles. What it means is that the more you drink, your voluntary muscle control is also down. This is as the result of alcohol depressant action on the brain. As blood alcohol concentration increases, there is a decrease in inhibition, less efficient vision and hearing, slur speech, difficulty in performing motor skill, deterioration of breathing, deterioration of judgment, and general feeling of euphoria. The drinker's brain can become so depressed that breathing and heartbeat can cease and death can occur. There is accumulation of fat in the liver, which is considered the forerunner of other liver diseases, often associated with prolonged use of alcohol. Temporarily, Increase in heartbeat and blood pressure. Sensation of taste, possibly due to the shifting of water from within the body's cell to the spaces between the cells. Experience of hangover, the temporary yet acute distress following excessive alcohol use. There is an irritation and inflammation of the esophagus, of the stomach, of the small intestine, and the pancreas. Altered liver function often resulting in alcoholic hepatitis or chronic inflammation of the liver and cirrhosis of the liver, which is characterized by the shrinking and hardening of the liver and the replacement of liver cells with scar tissues. These diseases are serious and life-threatening. There is an impairment of normal liver cell function and the development of various brain disorders, sometimes marked by psychosis. We will end this series here. This is Dr. Daniel Ganu for AWR. Ghana. Thank you. For any inquiries or contribution, you can contact us on plus two three three two four four six seven three five. Two eight or 244 235017 or email us at radio at vvu.edu.gh or through the postal address Adventist World Radio Ghana PO Box AF 595 Adenta Greater Accra Region Ghana Ghana Voice of Voice Jesus
sing his mercy and his grace. In the mansions bright and blessed, he'll prepare for us our place. When we all, when we all get to heaven, what a day, what a day, rejoicing day of rejoicing that will be. When we all, when we all see Jesus, we'll sing and shout and While we walk the pilgrim pathway, clouds will overspread the skies. But when traveling days are over, not a shadow on our side. When we all, when we all get to heaven, what a day, what a day, rejoicing of rejoicing be. that will be. When we all, when we all see Jesus, we'll sing and shout. Let us then be true and faithful, trusting, serving every day. Just one glimpse of Him in glory will the toils of our pay. When we all, when we all get to heaven, what a day, what a day, what a day it will be. When we all, when we all see Jesus, we'll sing and shout. This is Moment of Truth. I'm Elijah Efriye. And our sermon is dubbed Sleeping in the Mist of Storm. Sleeping in the Mist of Storm. And the story is found in the book of Jonah, the entire book of Jonah. But we will center our sermon on the chapter 1, verse 5. Chapter 1, verse 5, the book of Jonah. Chapter 1, verse 5. I read, All the sailors were afraid, and each cried out to his God. And they threw the cargo into the sea, lighting the ship. But Jonah had gone below deck, where he lay down and fell into a deep sleep. I will take it again. All... The sailors were afraid, and each cried out to his own God. And they threw the cargo into the sea to lighten the ship. But Jonah had gone below deck, where he lay down and fell into a deep sleep. Jonah is one of the wonderful prophets the Bible talks about. Though much was not said about Jonah, but he is one of the prophets who transformed several lives. The city of Nineveh was the capital of Assyria. Assyria was an empire some years back. They were so cruel and bloodshed and empire. They were so wicked to the point that when they besiege you, they will kill everyone. They hardly have mercy. The way they kill and destroy human were so cruel that they were known to be the bloodshed country. And so when God told Jonah to go to Nineveh, which happens to be the capital of Assyria, he was afraid to go. And he was angry because why should God have mercy on a country like that? An empire who is so wicked has tormented the entire world, not only Israelite. And so Jonah was so angry and was afraid because he knew that when he goes there, that will be the end of his life. That is happening to a lot of ministers because they know that southern grounds are hard. Southern grounds are full of idols and southern religions that 
when you temper with them, they will kill you. They are running from God's errand. A lot of ministers are rejecting God's call because they are afraid to die. They are afraid to lose their life. And they think that those people do not merit God's grace and mercy. God have mercy on us. And so, Jonah decided to go to the other side, opposite where God sent him to go. Jonah was asked to go to Nineveh, but he decided to go to where he wants. And so, Jonah turned around and he bought a boat. And as he was in the boat, there was a tempest. And so Jonah went down to the boat and slept. So as they were sailing, the sailors threw off everything, thinking the Lord was causing their problem in order to save their life. And they prayed for a very long time, but it was not working. They prayed to their God, but nothing was happening. My good friends, sleep is very good. As flowers depend on water for growth, as great doors depend on rich inches to open and close, as cars depend on fuel to move, as doctors depend on drugs to heal patients, human beings and every living creature depend on sleep to stay alive and be active. But we must be careful where and when we sleep. You cannot sleep when you are on a mission. You cannot sleep when souls are dying. You cannot sleep when God has a special purpose for you. You cannot sleep when someone's life is at stake. You cannot sleep when you have a special mission. Jonah should not have slept because he had a mission. Some of us are sleeping when we have mission. Some of us are sleeping when we need to work for the salvation of others. Some of us are sleeping and we have neglected our family. Some of us are sleeping and our children have got the opportunity to do whatever they want. Some of us are sleeping and so things are going bad in class. Some of us are sleeping. That is why our results are very poor. Some of us are sleeping. Instead of exercising to keep our body in shape we sleep throughout you ought not to sleep when you are on a mission my good friends god wants you to be active awake and work for him you ought not to sleep you have a purpose in life for when you read jeremiah chapter 1 verse 4 that was he says that whilst you were not born when you were in your mom's stomach He knew you and ordained you as a prophet unto the nation to save you are a royal priesthood. As Peter says, that you need to go and speak the love of God, spread the good news to others for them to also have salvation. Some of us think we have had it all. And so there's no need to go. And so we are sleeping. A lot of church members are sleeping. A lot of pastors are sleeping. Countless elders are sleeping. Whilst there are fields which has not been entered, just turn around and look at yourself. Your next door neighbor, have you been able to go there to preach Christ to the person? Have you showed love to others? We are sleeping in the church. The Bible says that when the days are going to a close and soon Jesus Christ will be coming the love of many will grow cold. Because the love of many has grown cold, a lot of us are sleeping. We care not about dying souls. We have no feeling for dying souls. We don't think about those who are perishing. Have you thought of those in the pagan religion, those in other religions that they do not know the true message? They do not know the love of Christ. They do not have the Redemption message, but you are sleeping. God have mercy on us and forgive us. And so while Jonah was sleeping, God caused a great storm on the sea. My good friends, whenever you go where you are not supposed to be, you cannot be comfortable. Whenever you 
decide to go your way, you will never have peace in your life. Whenever you go contrary to God's word, life will not be good for you. And so I pray that when God sends you, you go straight to where he has. And so it's my prayer that the love of God will touch you and you will not sleep while souls are dying. You will work to save the dying. Let's pray. Father, we thank you for the opportunity, for giving us your word again. And you are telling us that we should not sleep whilst others are dying. And so we pray for the strength to go and speak to those who are dying. We ask for strength because we lack strength. We pray in Jesus' name. Amen. Thank you very much for staying with us. Once again, you can reach us on plus two three three two four four six seven three five two eight or zero two four four two three five zero one seven or email us at radio at vvu dot edu dot gh or through the postal address Adventist World Radio Ghana PO Box AF five nine five. Adenta Greater Accra Region. I believe today's magazine has been a blessing. May the good Lord's hand be in your life. Amen. Remember to tune in same time tomorrow. Bye for now. Thank you.